Hello and welcome to our overview of IPSIS 49 Retirement Benefit Plans. My name is Dave Warren. I'm the Deputy Director of the IPSASB. And with me today is Christoph Braxton, Principal with the IPSASB. Christoph, to kick us off, why don't you tell us why the IPSASB began this IPSIS 49 project? Well, Dave, yeah, I think that's an important question to ask. Um, as always, we are trying as the IPSASB to look at PFM and improvements in public financial management and looking also at where we have gaps in the IPSAS literature. And we heard from constituents that we definitely needed a standard on retirement benefits plans in the public sector. Um, but doing so uh, to try and increase transparency and accountability by these retirement benefit plans in the accounting, especially for the obligations that they have towards participants of, of these plans. And the standard itself, having now uh, been approved, uh, we have to acknowledge and, and point out that the standard deals with retirement benefit plans, but not those old age pensions and welfare and secu other social security type programs that we would do find in the public sector. Um, so only retirement benefit plans. Well, Christoph, that's really interesting and something that I heard over and over again in this project and you began to touch on, you talked about how, as the name suggests, it deals with retirement benefit plans. But again, the question I always heard was, we already have IPSIS 39 employee benefits. So why did we need IPSIS 49? What's what's the difference and in, in where do these two standards separate from each other? Yeah, absolutely, Dave. Uh, that is correct. I mean, with IPSIS 39 on employee benefits, we already have the link being the employee. Um, in this instance, we are looking at retirement benefit plans being the structure, the separate entity that was created, and therefore a perspective in this standard from that entity's um, side and not the employer or the sponsor side. Um, it is all about the, the benefits that these members or participants, as we call them in the standard, uh, want to uh, need to be uh, recorded on and reported on. And ultimately, the interesting point is the, the fact that we bring in IPSAS 49, we bring other elements to the fore as well. For example, uh, defined contribution plans uh, also have an obligation to account for those contributions that were collected for members and on behalf of members um, to account for that even as a liability, whereas IPSAS 39 does not uh, require the accounting or the uh, creation of a liability for defined contribution plans. So that's interesting, Christoph. So the way I think of it, the way I interpret your response a little is that IPSAS 39, you're talking about the different obligations that result right. from accounting under IPSAS 39. And the way I see it is IPSAS 39 really is a one balance on an entity's financial statements, the net asset or liability related to the retirement benefit asset or obligation. But it sounds like IPSAS 49 is really blowing that one balance out. And, and as you said, requiring a, a retirement benefit plan to recognize the assets and liabilities that make up that single balance. Do you think that's a fair characterization? Yeah, absolutely. It is all about the management of the obligation through whether or not the plan has investments in place in order to cover the obligations, or if a plan, for example, is sponsored or otherwise central government um, comes to the, um, the fore in terms of funding the liabilities, then that is reflected in a gross level so that there is equal management of the, the parts that make up the plan itself. So that's very helpful, Christoph. And I know there's a lot more guidance in IPSIS 49 as well as you yes. just talked about it. It tells you how to recognize or present financial statements for the retirement benefit plan. That can all be found on the pronouncement, but it sounds like the real key issue is scope. So let's leave it there, Christoph. But before we sign off, can you let everyone know what the effective date is and, and when they can expect to have to implement this guidance? Yeah, as much as we know that the standard is needed, we also do uh, regard the, the timing of it to be necessary uh, for implementation to, to, to develop. And therefore, we have opted uh, to, to approve uh, the standard for an effective date of 1 January in 2026. 
so in a, in a few years time only um and that the standard is proposed uh, it will be applied rather uh, prospectively by retirement benefit plans in the public sector so again very helpful and january 1 2026 is going to come up sooner than than we expect um, so if you need any additional guidance on this, please visit the IPSASB's website, www.ipsasb.org. And you can find things like the pronouncement itself, the at a glance videos, all supporting uh, the implementation and understanding of IPSAS 49. I hope that you found this short video helpful in beginning your journey to understand IPSAS 49 and ultimately its adoption.